The little boy's parents sat in sadness in the principal's office. It had been hours since he had gone missing, and they had searched everywhere. There was no hiding the sadness in the officer's eyes. Their chances of finding him were dwindling with each passing hour. The phone rang just then. Things were about to get worse. Little Daniel was in high spirits when his parents woke him up for school that morning. The morning was supposed to be like any other Monday. And a few hours after his father dropped him off at school, the boy's principal called him. Daniel was nowhere to be found and no one knew what had happened to him. The news spread quickly. It was known to everyone in town that a six-year-old child had gone missing. A police report was filed and the search began immediately. The little boy had escaped the school grounds, but no one could figure out how he had done it. Daniel's parents were worried sick. They searched every corner of town but couldn't find him. Made the concerned parents waited for answers in the principal's office after searching for hours. The police and neighbors searched high and low for the boy in the streets. His parents were filled with terrible thoughts. A tragic event occurred to their son and they feared what might happen next. Their veins were filled with anger. In the corner of the room, the detective assigned to their son's case stood deep in thought. There was no sense in any of it. Is it possible for a young child to vanish from school grounds with anyone noticing? There had been cases like this before, and sadly, they never ended as he had hoped. There was a cold wind blowing through the streets. A dark gray cloud obscured the sun, threatening to spill at any moment. Their dream of starting a family had always been a priority for Amy and Martin Gray. In an instant, their lives were changed by the birth of their son, Daniel. The day they welcomed him into the world was one of the happiest days of their lives. A couple vowed to protect him at all costs, but they were not prepared for the tragedy that would follow just six years later. At age two, Daniel's parents moved from Houston, Texas to a new neighborhood. It was a calculated move. Over the years, they watched their baby grow into a healthy and happy boy. Nothing could have prepared them for what would happen shortly after his sixth birthday. When Martin woke Daniel up for school that morning, the little boy was in high spirits. He loved his school and he couldn't wait to tell his friends and teacher about his weekend. Hence, the 10-minute drive to school was no different from any other day, and when Daniel stepped out of his father's truck, everything seemed fine. Once he was sure that his child was safely inside of school grounds, he drove off. Martin would never be able to forget the phone call he received just an hour later. When the principal's name first appeared on his phone screen, he didn't think much of it. The principal said something that sent shivers down the father's spine. Mister. Gray, Daniel's gone. We can't find him anywhere. Martin and his wife, Amy, spent hours driving through town, searching for their little boy. A warning was sent out and people from all over their city were on the lookout for the missing six-year-old boy. As soon as the police were informed, search parties were sent out, but no one had a clue as to where the boy could have gone. Terrible thoughts crossed his parents' minds. Something happened to their son and they feared the possibilities. What if someone had taken him? What if he wasn't even in the state anymore? Martin and Amy knew about the terrible things some people would do to children, and they were terrified for their little boy's safety. Everyone in town had received the news that a six-year-old boy had gone missing, including 42-year-old Shauna Oswald. Shauna Oswald didn't know the Gray family personally. The woman worked as a bus driver in town, and that morning, she was simply going about her usual routine. But as she drove her bus around town, she heard about Daniel's disappearance on the radio. The news instantly broke her heart. She could only imagine what his parents were going through. By the time 3 p.m. rolled around, she had almost forgotten about the terrible news from that morning, but soon, she would be met with a horrifying sight. In the distance, she noticed something odd. Cars were swerving and honking. People were slamming on their brakes, but from where she was sitting, she couldn't see a thing. The second her eyes landed on something in the middle of the road. She remembered what she had heard on the radio earlier that day. She had to call the authorities right away. She stopped her bus in the middle of the road, not caring if it inconvenienced anyone else. She was doing what she had to do. She dialed the three-digit number and waited for an operator to answer. Her palms were sweaty and her hands were shaking. Cars were speeding down the road and slamming on their shaking and on their brakes right before impact. Once she had given the necessary information, the operator informed Shauna that help was on the way, but she couldn't wait for the police to get there. The boy was in severe danger as he walked through traffic, alone. Shanna swung her arms in the air, shouting for the cars around her to stop. Luckily, they complied. Daniel was distressed and dazed in the middle of the road. It was clear that he was overwhelmed to the point where he struggled to move from where he was standing. He was beyond terrified as Shanamo walked him back to the bus. He was in safe hands, but now, Shana needed the police to take him to his parents. And Ryan and Amy had driven alongside the lead detective when he received the call from the operator. Daniel had been found in the middle of town, wandering the streets all by himself. When they arrived on the scene, Shauna was on the bus with the boy on her lap, sobbing into her shoulder. Martin and Amy cried out to their boy as they ran toward him and Shauna. 
Finally, after hours of searching, Daniel was back home, safe. It turned out that one of the groundskeepers at his school had left a gate open, and Daniel decided to explore the streets around his school. Soon enough, the little boy was lost. The school posted a formal apology on its website, and the principal shared his sorrow with the parents. The old man was so mortified, and Martin knew that he would never allow something like this to happen ever again. But at the end of the day, he was just relieved that his son was okay. That's all that mattered. He would forever be grateful for the woman who saved him, 